This is Comcast Newsmakers. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Steve Mom. Great to have you along this hour. We're in the beautifully renovated Lewis and Clark High School. Education, the theme this month, my guest is Ben Small, superintendent of Central Valley School District. Ben, great to have you here. Great to be here. And again, you uh, you know, interesting times for education. Budgets are tight. State government not yeah. always doling out the funds, but you're really trying to plan for the future in ways that really meet the, the needs of kids best. Talk a little bit about it. You've got working on a capital facilities plan and how to, and you got some overcrowding issues you're, you're trying to overcome. Yeah, well, I, this year has been the kind of the convergence of the plan of planning phases that I think position ourselves for the, for the future. And we've just completed a 15 month process to identify our facilities needs, capital facilities needs across the district for the next 25 years. And I saw enormous amounts of input. I mean, focus groups, tons of citizen input. Yeah. You really dug deep on that. We, we really believe in our, in our school district in Central Valley that our community is critical to our decisions and getting their input ahead of time prior to when decisions are made um, was really part of this process, both in our strategic planning process and our capital facilities plan. And so you, we had five, four or five community forums where we had people come give us input as to um, what they thought about the plan, what they saw the needs for. Our capital facilities committee actually toured every building that was 10 years or older in our district, mm -hmm. which is um, almost all of them. And uh, I think there were two that were excluded basically. Um, went through all of those schools, took a look at firsthand the needs of those schools, and put themselves in the in the position of the student and the mm -hmm. learner in those classrooms. Mm -hmm. And um, they really started to see the needs fo um, surface in the Central Valley mm -hmm. School District as far as facilities go. And not just facilities needs, but facilities as they serve our students. Right um, how it boils down to the experience students have. So absolutely. you've got some overcrowding. How is that being addressed as you look forward with that capital facilities plan? Well, our first, our first part of that is we have um, most of our growth is on our eastern side of our district. However, we have pockets of growth throughout the Spokane Valley. Neighborhoods turn over, young families move in. And there isn't one school that we could identify as being um, a school that wasn't necessary for, um, to serve the needs of our students. Um, however, the overcrowding is mostly on the east side. We'll be opening a, a new elementary school um, on Mission and Long, which is um, uh, really eastern, eastern mm -hmm. central part of the district. That'll, and when do you expect that to come online? We expect that to come online um, as early as 2013, um, 2013, 2014 school year. Um, that would allow us to close our kindergarten center and put those kindergartners back into their home schools at Liberty Lake Elementary School and also at Green Acres Elementary Which, School. Which, of course, would be ideal. Ideal. Um, right now, we've got a, our kindergarten center is a great place, but uh, it doesn't serve the kids um, the way we want it to serve. We want our kids to be in, our, in their home schools. Sure. We also have overcrowding at Green Acres Middle School. And so what, we have, what the plan has done is said, let's take a look at remodeling um, one of our existing facilities and uh, making it a little bit bigger, allowing for the overcrowding to be reboundaried and moved into that, that other middle school. That would be Evergreen Middle School. Um, that alleviates the overcrowding at the very start of the, of the plan, um, but then allows us to look at how do we meet the needs of our kids in a other aging facilities across the district. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, it takes money to build these things. I know you've got some bond issues that are part of your strategic plan to fund all that. So we've got about just a minute here. Give me a quick breakdown on that. Well, um, our first bond would go before the voters February 8th, 2011, and included in that bond would be Evergreen Middle School, the new elementary school we just talked about. Also included in the bond would be uh, Ponderosa Elementary School, Opportunity Elementary School, uh, Green Acres Elementary School. Um, I think I got all of them. Chester Elementary Chester. School. Chester, yeah, it's always good to have help out there. <laughs> I, I, would, <laughs> I wish I had that. You know, I and I would think, at. you know, we hear so much about, you know, staying competitive. Right. in terms of math and science and all those things. I'm not trying to get on my soapbox here, but it would seem like supporting this is really important for all of us in this community. Well, I believe, I believe as you look at our facilities, facilities absolutely enhance the learning environment for our kids. And um, currently, we cannot support the level of technology that's needed um, for our kids' learning. Um, if you're taking a look at our middle schools and our labs that support the sciences, those types of things have to be supported by a building and a building environment. And um, our facility plan puts us in line to make sure that we're able to meet the needs of our kids. Perfect, and we're going to have to leave it there. But Ben, pleasure to have you here. Thank nice you. to have you along. See you again next hour. Stay tuned. CNN, headline news, top of the hour. <laughs>